What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today in Modern Warfare 3 we got a fairly surprise weapon balancing update, and this came with a good handful of weapon changes as well as some adjustments to how they're handling ranked play and weapon restrictions. So let's just dive right into it, and we're gonna start it off with the MTZ-556. Surprisingly, this got a little bit of a buff to its bullet velocity. Before this update, it was 650 meters per second. Now it's 690 meters per second. And while this isn't a massive buff to the MTZ, honestly, I'm a little surprised by this. I still think this is one of the best guns in the game currently, and it really flies under the radar. I'm surprised we don't see more people using it. And now it's gonna be just a little bit better after this update. After that, sticking with the assault rifle category, the Holger 556 apparently saw a slight buff to its recoil. The patch notes mentioned they adjusted recoil and gun kick to decrease deviation, allowing a more predictable pattern. In saying that though, when we look at pre-patch versus post-patch, post-patch looks very noticeably worse than pre-patch. This definitely appears to be a nerf rather than a buff to the recoil for the Holger 556. And trust me, I didn't mix these up or anything. I actually went back and double and triple checked to make sure that I didn't actually mess up my files and the pre-patch is actually the post-patch. This is actually what happened before and after the update. So the Holger 556 is going to be very noticeably worse in the recoil department after this patch. As for the next one on this list, this was just recapping a hidden update that took place that I've already covered to the M16. Now this is something I made a video about a couple days ago, but just as a really quick recap here, they very noticeably improved horizontal and vertical recoil, gun kick, and visual recoil on the M16. And like I said in that video, this actually makes the M16, at least in my opinion, the best burst assault rifle in the entire game. So the M16 is definitely worth checking out after this update. And if you guys haven't leveled it up yet, I would highly recommend doing so since we are expecting an aftermarket part for it at some point throughout season three. And if you're curious, I'll just quickly show the build that I put together as well for the M16. I'm not going to read everything out and go through all the details since that's not the purpose of this video, but if you want, you can screenshot this, try this build out, I think you'll be pretty impressed with it. And that's going to wrap it up for the assault rifles, now let's get into the SMG changes. And the first thing that was changed is the Ram 9, and the patch notes mention a decrease to minimum and maximum hipfire accuracy. Which, looking at the stats, the spread values haven't changed at all, so I don't know exactly what they mean by accuracy in this case since the spread itself hasn't changed. So I don't have any way to really properly confirm whether or not this change took place. I guess we're just gonna have to take their word for it, but the spread values are the same. And then on top of this, they did nerf our aim down sight time a little bit. It went from 200 milliseconds pre-patch to 220 milliseconds post-patch. After that, with the Striker 9, before this update, it had a unique ability in the SMG category, and this is, you could aim down sight while sliding without having to use the tactical pads. Unfortunately, with this update, they removed that special ability with the Striker 9, and you will go into tack stance while you're sliding and trying to aim down sight, just like most of the other SMGs, unless you're using tactical pads. And the reason I say most is the brand new FJX Horus also had this ability, and it still does after this update. So it's now the only SMG in the game where you can aim down sight while sliding without having to use tack pads. Then let's move on to the Striker 45, and this one actually saw a couple buffs. First off, its aim down sight time was buffed from 215 milliseconds down to 204 milliseconds. That's pretty slight, but it is an improvement. And then our bullet velocity was also buffed slightly from 540 meters per second up to 570 meters per second. And then finally, for SMG changes, we've got the WSP Swarm. This one actually saw a nerf to its flinch resistance. Pre-patch, our flinch resistance was 0.8 newtons, which was very, very good. Post-patch, it's now 0.15 newtons, which is now much more in line with the other SMGs in the game. This was a standout before this update. And while this is definitely a nerf to the WSP Swarm, I don't think this is the type of thing that's gonna have a really severe impact on the effectiveness of this gun. When you look at most of the other SMGs that have this same flinch value, flinch is rarely a big issue that's causing you to lose gunfights with those guns. And I don't see that story being any different here with the new flinch values on the WSP Swarm. Next up, let's get into the shotgun category and the Haymaker with the Jack Maglift kit saw some nerfs to its pellet count, its near medium damage and its near medium damage range. And the easiest way to display this for you guys is to just look at the range values and the consistency with those ranges. And you can see this was actually a very significant nerf to the Jack Maglift kit. Our two shot kill potential when aimed down sight while using a choke Assuming we're not using any attachments that boost our damage range, this is just 6.4 meters, whereas previously it was 12 meters. So it's gonna be a lot more rare to get those really quick two taps. And not only that, our really consistent two shot kill range where you don't even really need to focus on landing a lot of pellets, you can mainly just hip fire. Previously this was six meters, now it's about two meters or so. So you have to be a lot more precise with this or just a lot more spammy with it and go for that three shot kill. 
Next up, let's get into the sniper rifle category, and with the new Moore sniper rifle, they just mentioned they corrected an optic misalignment, causing shots to travel slightly off-center. And I'm not too sure if this is tied to a specific optic or the default one, since they didn't mention, so I did do tests with the default optic at 40 meters, and both pre-patch and post-patch, if anything, it seems like it's shooting very, very slightly to the right of where I was aiming, but not really enough that it should make any noticeable difference in a 6v6 environment, at least. And like I said, this was pre-patch and post-patch. So honestly, with how vague the description was in the patch notes for this, perhaps I'm just testing this wrong, maybe it was with a specific optic or something, but in either case, I was unable to find any difference in your sight alignment with the Moors. After that, getting into some attachments, the Moors Hexer optic previously gave us a 50 millisecond boost to our aim down sight speed, and they just removed that benefit entirely from that optic. And then another thing is with the ECS Requieter Suppressor Muzzle, before this update, we weren't able to use that suppressor on any of the Modern Warfare 2 SMGs, only the Modern Warfare 3 ones. After this update, you can now equip that on the Modern Warfare 2 SMGs. And I would definitely recommend doing that if you are going to be using a suppressed build. And that right there wraps it up for all of the weapon and attachment changes that took place. However, on top of that, we saw a couple key equipment changes here. First off, with the EMD grenade, they just made it so the tracking device will ignore enemies that are down. And down players must stand up before removing that tracking device. But more importantly, with the frag grenade, in the Season 3 update, they basically destroyed the frag grenade. They made it so, so bad by eliminating the ability to get a one-hit kill on a non-EOD enemy in the intermediate damage range. With this update, they once again increase that to the point where we can get a one-hit kill in that intermediate damage, assuming the enemy isn't using EOD, so it deals 150 damage. But in order to still ensure that it's not as powerful as it was before Season 3, They've also decreased this intermediate explosive damage radius from 4.9 meters down to 3.8 meters. So that's our new one hit kill potential with a frag grenade against non-EOD users. It's 3.8 meters, which is going to be noticeably worse than before Season 3, but much better than it has been since the launch of Season 3. And then finally, before we get into the ranked adjustments, with the remote turret kill streak, the player is no longer forcibly swapped to their primary weapon upon the destruction of an own turret. So just a little minor bug that they took care of with that one. And now let's get into the ranked play adjustments here. Essentially what they're doing with ranked play is from today until April 23rd, they're gonna be trying out adding a few more guns into the mix since the restrictions were overly restrictive for many players to get into ranked play, especially players that traditionally aren't really following the competitive scene all that much and aren't super into like professional play, but they still wanted to dabble with ranked play. I mean, up until this point, we've literally only had the MCW available in the assault rifle category. Whereas now for this limited test run, they're also gonna have the BP-50, the Holger 5.56 and the MTZ 5.56 in the assault rifle category. And then for SMGs, we now have access to the HRM-9 and the RAM-9 for ranked play. And honestly, I think it's great that they're at least trying something a little different with ranked play, because I know that's one of the big things that's turning people away from wanting to try ranked play. But at the same time, I'm very curious to see what happens with the meta in ranked play now that these guns are available. I think with this, there may be potential for a one gun meta to emerge, but time will have to tell on that one. Perhaps we will be seeing more variety. Maybe this will be a positive change for ranked play. We're really just going to have to wait and see. And with that, that is gonna wrap it up for today's video on this relatively surprise update. I definitely didn't expect some weapon balancing. And this is where I wanna hear from you guys in those comments down below. First off, what do you guys think of the weapon balancing that took place with this update? Do you guys think these were generally positive changes or not so much? And second, how are you feeling about the fact that they've added more guns to be available in ranked play? Do you think this is gonna be a good change for ranked or not? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.